some the positives here I've already talked about. I think that they flesh it out enough where I'm not completely pissed off at how much how little I know about the temporal cold war at this point. They had mm-hmm. to do something, and they've revealed a few things about it. Um, I think the biggest problem with the temporal cold war to this point is Daniels. Daniels to yeah. me makes no sense in what he's supposed to be. So because they don't they don't tell you what he's supposed to be. There's no real. Again, like I, I feel like they they introduced him as a Section Thirty One type thing, but then they abandoned left that. it at, uh, abandoned it at that. Like they uh, established the secrecy, and then when they actually decided to use him again, it's like, oh, what does this guy actually do? Well, here's the problem in Shockwave Part One. You made the joke that he is too low key in terms of seeing that his future has been destroyed. When they show up at the mm-hmm. end, he's just like, oh, look at that! Like that, it's all gone. What a what a pity. This one, they do the opposite. He's much more stressed out by what's going on mm-hmm. at this point. I I don't think the stressed out personality makes any sense. If this is a time cop, he fundamentally understands that none of this is like permanent. He can change everything right. that's happening. And right. he also is like, well, what are we going to do without a time portal? He He knows how to fix it with like no tools whatsoever. And he's like, right. yeah, they teach everybody in this about... But so the conflict here is that time travel is extremely dangerous to the point where they've built this Cold War artifice around it, where there are agents who go out to prevent time travel. At the mm-hmm. same time, they're teaching high schoolers how to time travel to go back in time and do things. And it's apparently super easy. You can just do this with like a rock and a bit of copper and Archie's yeah. communicator from 800 years ago, and you can travel back in time. Makes no sense to me. I just... I really don't like the way Daniels is played because he should be Archer's or Daniels's primary focus should be I cannot tell Archer anything and I'm a cool character through all of this because I know we can reset the timeline to go back and do things uh, that we can no future that we're living in and no present is set I can fix things like this yeah. Archer or, here I it mean, is I think his his freak out is warranted if the time machines all being destroyed is an actual problem sure but it's clearly not right um like if if the way that they <laughs> I, I think it would have worked better if they hadn't undercut all of that by him saying yeah they taught us how to do this in high school mm-hmm. like it was you know algebra or something that kind of takes a little of the tension away then it's like oh i don't know if arch is going to be able to bang that copper wire down to the right thickness in yep. order you know it's like that's or it's just, uh, our, our, like, we don't know what happens to Daniels at the end of this, right? If he builds this right. thing and he's like, only one of us can travel through time after. This thing has only got enough juice to get one of us back. And he's like, Archer, you have to go back because you seem to be vital to this. But this potentially could erase me. You know, if, like, if this was a death, a true, they're not going to kill him because they've already killed him and then not explained why he's not dead at all. So right. if you... If if they actually stuck to their guns and was like Daniel sacrifices himself at this point to send Archer back in time, th- that feels okay to me at that point. Like that's a I'm willing yeah. to accept no... that that he would send him back. Oh, you, you broke up a little bit there. So I was just saying that um, Daniel's sacrifice there is the best way to save that. I think. Yeah, and I, I that's that's one of the things that I think there's a problem that they don't spend enough time in the future because you don't have any stakes. There's no time constraint at the in the future. Like it's not like they are uh, under the gun of someone finding them or so. You know, like the in the three thousand years in the future, a thousand years in the future, the Suliban rule everything. So you've got like the hunter killers trying to find them while they're trying to build this time machine. You don't have that. It's not like a Terminator scenario right. where they have a, only one chance to send somebody back. They could have been sitting there for six months building a time machine. Yeah. Yeah. And and you don't really know, um, and I also I also thought it was funny when Arch is like, "Why don't you just send me back like two days before so we don't none of this ever happens?" And he's like, ah, "I'm not gonna mess with the timeline again." <laughs> it's like, "Well, you're already you're already there, man. You may as well." That was um, it's funny. That was horrible. I thought the, like I I was genuinely expecting some sort of. Uh, philosophical answer as to why they have to go back to the main right. time, but it's just yeah. this is the only way the plot makes sense. Uh, yeah, so you have to go Daniels, back. It's just because Daniels doesn't want us doesn't want to screw it up even further. Yeah. It's like, well, you, I mean, you feel like you've done about as poor a job as you could do at this point. <laughs> D- Daniels, it's funny we yeah. uh, 
we watched uh, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure last night, and it's been a long time since I've watched that. And uh, there's one interesting idea that they throw out in there that I don't know if it completely makes sense, but it makes sense enough for the movie, which is that the present is continually moving forward. So they keep sa- Rufus tells Ted that the time on his watch, which is the time of his present, always stays the same. So which which then puts a ticking clock on a time machine story, which in and of itself shouldn't have one because you got a time machine. Mm-hmm. But you they can only like if it's eight o'clock when they leave, four hours from now on his watch, it is it is going to be four hours from then in San Dimas when they, it's it's this weird sort of like little tiny bit that's a li- that's kind of interesting. Yeah, but. I'm surprised that they they could they they didn't do something like that where it's like well we can't send you back because your time is always moving forward or some bullshit like that yeah it's just like no I just don't want to take a chance of screwing it up even further <laughs> it would be a lot safer but this is gonna look this will look bad for me at that point I'm already looking at at least one citation from my my. Uh, uh, commanding officer when this is all said and done i'm not gonna i'm not going for any more they they haven't done a good they haven't done a good job of playing daniels as someone who is loath to interfere with the timeline he says he is but he he interferes with the timeline constantly about like every decision he's making is some sort of interference with the timeline um and i think it's just i think that's just a problem he's not he's he's a combination of not being mysterious enough not withholding enough and not knowledgeable enough of what's possible in his universe. You know, it's, it's just this mm-hmm. weird mix. And so he, he comes out he as this kind of a pussy character who's like, yeah. Daniels, are you going to do something to like make this, this work out? He doesn't seem like he's a very knowledgeable time cop. Right. He seems like, like if they had a scene where uh, they were walking through the library and Archer finds out that Daniels, actually didn't make it through basic training or something where he's like, you know, I wanted to be a time cop my whole life, but I just didn't have what it takes. So I just wanted to do something for the Federation. And now we're in this bind because I guess that's what happens when you teach high schoolers how to make time machines. Yes. Um, you know, or like he doesn't seem, and I think that's, I don't think that's his fault. I think that's the a fault of the writers for not establishing what any of this means. Right. So it's difficult to give him any sort of, relatable idea of what being a time cop or an agent of a, a temporal agent in the cold war means yeah because they obviously don't even know so yeah. yeah yeah it's just i mean i just comp- also sorry i feel like temporal temporal time temporal cold war time cop that's a that's a section 31 thing like just yeah. just do it just make him a section 31 guy well i mean i just i compare him to sloan from ds9 and yeah, exactly. I, I think that Sloan is not a time. Who also cop. is the, the plays Bill death in the sequel yeah. of Bill and Ted. Yeah, he's Sloan isn't a, a time cop, but what he does is that every time you see Sloan, the the performance and the writing gives you the understanding that he is sort of playing a game, or mm-hmm. he knows more than he's letting on. You're never really sure. Where he, where to where you can like put him in terms of his exactly. understanding on things, yeah. And that's through a, that's a good example of just withholding the information that I think Daniels mm-hmm. should be able to do. But Sloan yep. comes across as confident in a way that Daniels comes across as like as you're saying he never finished the job and has no idea what is supposed to be happening. And if you wanted to go that direction, I'd totally be fine with Daniels as the last time cop and he's the worst one at his job and he's the one that got sent back to do this. At sure. least that would that would give me an understanding of where this character is supposed to be. I would prefer him to be like Sloan. And because I I think that these guys are dicking around with timelines enough, they need to have that kind of confidence in what they're right. experiencing. And he doesn't give me that. Yeah, the whole point of having someone from the future involved in a temporal Cold War going back in time and, and messing with stuff is to gently nudge the timeline. So their whole standpoint should be, I know what's going to happen in the future. You don't know anything. So anything that I'm telling you is I'm doing entirely in service for me yep. and for my end, not necessarily because I'm a good guy, because I believe in your mission or whatever. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's like they should have that air of mystery. So you get into situations where 
Daniel says, you know what? Maybe you should think about doing this. And that ends up getting like a crewman killed or something. Yeah. And then Arch is like, well, you told me to get him killed. And it's like, well, you know. Yeah. Can't make an omelet without breaking some future eggs, I guess. <laughs> but you know, you know what I mean? Like that that kind of element where Daniels, though a ally ultimately, there should be some uh antagonism there, I think. Yeah. He's a And you should be un unsure of whether or not you can trust him. Right. Yeah. It it's he's um he's not really the same, but he's he's Garrick esque in that his his what he's saying mm. is sort of self-serving to him, but there is a kernel of truth that's behind a lot of what he's saying. So it's, it's you can never tell when he's lying and when he's not. Garrick, I suppose, is the always lying characteristic. But yeah. there, there's a sense that Garrick's lie persona is a truthful persona to him. Like it's he's not mm -hmm. acting out of character or anything like that. And Daniels, I think, will benefit. And I, I think the other thing, too, is like if you think about what that character should be, this temporal time agent... You need someone who believes ultimately more than anything that the time period that they come from is the time period that should exist and cannot be altered. Yeah. So they have to be willing to do whatever it takes to make sure that the time period they come from is going to happen the way it happens. Yeah. Which is a excuse me, which is a a fairly intense you're going to need an intense person for that. Yeah. That's a that's an intense level of of dedication. To, to the mission. So it, it's, yeah. I think that ties into the Federation thing. If they, if they coincide that, which is that like galactic peace or whatever was attained through the Federation eventually winning out, which is a, which is a pretty Star Trek-y idea that like these values are just mm -hmm. going to be like sewn across the universe and everyone will adopt these Federation values and it'll lead to good times. It's very much of like the exporting like U.S. foreign policy idea of just like give them mm -hmm. a, a better way of life and apparently they'll adopt it. Um, Six packs for everyone and, and, and American flags. So if they, if they, if that's the future, and you know what he's fighting for, you understand why Daniels cares about that future and why that's right. like the one that he wants to. It's not just that he is familiar with it and he doesn't want to have to read books because computers apparently haven't been invented in this alternate timeline. <laughs> it, it's more that he sees the greater good being serviced by that's the timeline that things worked out for everybody. And this other timeline is horrible and we don't want to actually go to that right. timeline. Yeah, exactly. And there, and his, his devotion to that mission should be pretty intense. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he just comes off as like, he's the last, he's the last guy in the, in the room that they told to shut the lights out it's, or something. It's he's, very similar to Sloan again. Sloan ultimately believes in the Federation so much that he's willing to subvert it to protect, exactly. to protect it in yeah. the, the greater good. And maybe, I mean, I don't know, maybe that, maybe that's the problem is, is the character that we're describing is too much like Sloan. He just has to be section so, 31. It's the same. It's the same. If it's, if it's, if it's future section 31, it totally makes mm -hmm. sense to me that that's what they have yeah. to do. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I just I, I'm wor I'm wondering if this character we're describing is essentially just Sloan, but he's a time cop, <laughs> and maybe they don't. Maybe they wanted to try do something different and different. not just drop a section thirty a, a shadowy section thirty one guy in there. But oh, would have been better than this. Yeah, I, mean, <laughs> I would have taken that over this any day. Yes, I if if this character was replaced with time cop or, Sloan, it would be perfect. I think. Or at the very least, get someone with some charisma to play yeah. this guy. Yeah, I know he's not. He's this not guy's a wet blanket. <laughs> Look, Mark Zuckerberg looking 